Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all having a fantastic day and that you're all doing absolutely incredible likes, comments, subscriptions. Comments are always very much appreciated. Very big thank you to everyone who is a clicker of affiliate links. Thank you for all the support on the travel channel. Thank you for all of the continued support on Money Rules, my other finance channel. Welcome back to another news I missed. Where I go over news that I missed, I am still away, but I made sure that there is tons of videos for everyone's out there. Yeah, because the cryptocurrency space never stops. And without further, ow, I hurt myself. What did I do? That what? What? What just happened? Ow, that really, that actually hurt. I, I ow. All right, and ow. Without further ado, let's just finally jump right into it. The William S. Paley Foundation will auction off at least $70 million in art masterpieces this autumn to expand the digital footprint of the Museum of Modern Art, otherwise known as the MoMA, and New York, and possibly, wink, acquire the museum's first NFTs. MoMA has been caring for William S. Paley's collection since the CBS-founded Oh, ooh, since he passed away in 1990, Paley's Namesake Foundation, which holds endowment funds for museums and educational and cultural programs, has enlisted Sotheby's to auction 29 of the 81 pieces. Proceeds from the sale will be used to expand the museum's digital presence. According to MoMA director Glenn Lowry in the Wall Street Journal, the museum has outlined several possibilities for the money. MoMA may soon launch its own streaming channel, host virtual exhibits and video chats with creators, or collaborate with universities and course providers to offer online courses more significantly. For crypto fans, MoMA may also be purchasing its first NFTs. Whatever NFTs they purchase are going to skyrocket in price. I'm telling you this right now. For the, If you don't know MoMA, I can't really help you. It's the Museum of Modern Art. It's absolutely gigantic. It's one of the most well-known museums on this uh, planet. A lot of very large artists have actually created NFTs. Shepard Fairey, Damien Hirst. I don't think Cause has done one. Uh, what's the other guy's name? Daniel Arsham. Uh, they've also like... So there have also been things that happened last year. We don't hear about it. I'm sure it's happening, but we don't hear too much about it that much now. Uh, is that museums around the world have actually digitized or nft Not a word. Uh, they're like some of their most famous artworks and have fractionalized them. So they broke them into pieces and people actually bought fractions of these like Picassos and other things like that. So whatever Sotheby's buys is going to get a lot of attention from a lot of people very quick. So I will definitely be keeping my eye on uh, whatever they end up purchasing. Yeah, that's the MoMA is uh, selling off a whole bunch of stuff with Sotheby's. And from the rumors, or from what uh, director Glenn Lowry says, they're probably going to be buying some NFTs with it as well. And I would assume it's going to be from major artists, but I mean, you also, who knows anymore? Like, it could, it could literally be uh, from anything because, you know, money. <coughs> That's the MoMA news. Yeah. Let's move on. Also in the news, that is a creepy sun. The Uruguay government is looking to regulate crypto assets, such as cryptocurrencies, and a new cryptocurrency bill was introduced by the executive power of the Parliament of Uruguay. The objective of the bill is to provide clarification on how cryptocurrency asset-related activities will be regulated. The proposed bill is the first bill to address the gray areas in which cryptocurrency exchanges and virtual asset service providers operate in the country, the bill intends to modify the organic charter of the Central Bank of Uruguay and introduce the Superintendents of Financial Services, part of the Central Bank, as the main overseer of activities of virtual asset service providers. A lot of countries, I think they're going to have a very hard time. Hear me out here. A lot of them keep putting their Central Bank in control over cryptocurrency regulations. 
I don't think it's going to turn out well for the country. I think we're going to see a tightening grip around crypto assets in many different places around the world. And these, my opinion, these countries will not uh, expand or do as well as other countries. Like there's a difference between having the CFTC oversee cryptocurrency activity or certain things, what have you. Uh, but the central bank only cares about the central bank. And many countries around the world have been devastated uh, by economic collapse because of activities of their central banks. So uh, one, uh, cool, good for them. Any day that crypto isn't banned is nice to see. Uh, but also the uh, central banks taking over is also like a gigantic red flag for a lot of different uh, countries. Um, but I mean, you know, at least they have actual regulations and everyone's still waiting for the U S to do something. Cause I don't understand why it's taken so long. Anyway, that's the Uruguayan government is working on creating proper cryptocurrency regulations. As long as they don't do some of that shady stuff that other countries have been doing, where like, you can't touch crypto if you're poor and like, only if you're rich, you can invest in it which is actually a thing. We've gone over that multiple times. That tells me that they once again want to keep the elite the elite and kind of keep everyone else as low as possible should if Bitcoin ever hit a million dollars. That's the sure. Why not news? As, at least it's not banned news. Yeah. Oh, my hand. What's wrong with me? Everything hurts. All right. Let's move on. Also in the news, a crypto lobbyist group is telling the USSEC that its inconsistent policies render it difficult, what? <laughs> to create a Bitcoin ETF. In a new report, the Chamber of Digital Commerce says it's time for the SEC to approve a Bitcoin ETF after it rejected numerous bids throughout the years. To do so, I think we had, there's been over 20 different proposals. I think the first one tried to get launched in 2013 or 2014 by the Winklevoss twins. The USSEC has since, to this date, said no to every single Bitcoin ETF proposal, but they have said yes to every other futures proposal, which allows them to continuously uh, lower the price of Bitcoin. Uh, just for uh, clarification, every other country who has tried, every other country who has tried to get a Bitcoin or an Ethereum or a crypto general exchange traded fund through, they got them through and they have multiple of them. According to the lobbyist group, the SEC is biased in its mandates for approving Bitcoin ETFs as it forces firms towards Bitcoin futures. I, I, I should have kept on reading towards Bitcoin futures, which it has shown it will approve. They said the SEC has imposed on the industry an unprecedented requirement unique only to Bitcoin, which requires, and also for those of you who don't know, and here's the dumbest part of how the world works, uh, Bitcoin has been declared a commodity. The CFTC deals with commodities. We should, by all logic, have a Bitcoin ETF because the Bitcoin does not fall under the jurisdiction of the SEC. Which requires that an applicant approve that price discovery on Bitcoin occurs on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, where futures contracts referencing Bitcoin trade as opposed to those on major cryptocurrency venues such as Coinbase and they wrote Gemini. Gemini is not even... You, they could have written Kraken or Binance. That would have made a lot more sense. So... We have a lot of these groups who keep popping up. Um, I would love to be a fly on the wall just to see exactly what they're discussing. Because I would imagine some screaming has to be going on in a lot of these conversations. The SEC knows exactly what they're doing. Uh, uh, years ago, I, I could have given them a fraction of a benefit of the doubt and been like, maybe Bitcoin's just too new. Uh, but the fact that they've let through everything else... The fact that they're going after every single company in the cryptocurrency space, just tell me, I believe that corruption is quite rampant around the world. And I think it would be nonsensical to believe that there is no corruption or someone's paying off someone within certain regulatory groups around the world. 
Because why does every other country have multiple Bitcoin ETFs except for the United States? Every other country hasn't imploded. I put it to you that way. Think, always think about it this way. Because because they, they also lied to us in the beginning as well and said one of the main reasons is that it would cause some type of economic trouble in, in the background. Isn't it weird how every other country just seems to, for, you know, for lack of a better term, be, be doing okay with their Bitcoin ETFs? But the U.S. dollar is collapsing. Anyway, that's the U.S. crypto lobbyist group is telling, but everyone's doing it. You have this group. I told you, you there's a there's a bipartisan bill that's going through in the United States that people are trying to push through, where both sides are like, dude, stop! Like no one, like the the, the SEC continues to uh, overstep and overreach, but they know that they have the power, and people in power tend to be corrupt sometimes. So that's just how it works. That's the lobbyist group is probably trying in vain to get a Bitcoin ETF pushed through. The SEC knows what they're doing. Yeah. All right. Woo. Yeah. Let's move on. Also in the news in what? Sir John Richmond, an official in real life business partner of Shiba Inu, is ready to build a buzz with his new collection and loads of big news at the Milan Fashion Week. Right. John Richmond, a fam- f- famous, famous English designer based in Italy, recently posted a tweet and announced that he is ready to display his new collection in the upcoming Milan Fashion Week, which started on the 20th of September. In addition, Shiba Inu's official in real life business partner created Curiosity among Shiba Inu community by k- saying that he would come up with loads of big news, okay, at the event and ask the community a question, what do you expect from this fashion week? I don't know. Will he be burning Shiba Inu on stage? Ooh, will there be a dress that has Shiba Inus on it and it, it, it'll, it'll light on fire and then that equivalent amount of Shiba Inu will also be burned. I don't know. I'm trying to think out of the box. I can't think of anything. While specifying his target community, he also added the hashtags Legends, Legends Silver Forever. Oh, no. So that's Legends Live Forever. Shib, Shiba John Richmond in his tweet. And there it is right there. Uh, Shiba Inu Ecosystem and John Richmond entered into a partnership to change the course of fashion. Oh boy, that's cringy. On the 28th of February of this year, the partnership enabled John Richmond to create 10,000 John Richmond SHIB NFTs in exchange for the showcase of the special SHIB X John, I'm, I'm tired of saying that name, collection in the upcoming fashion show organized in Milano, especially during Milan Fashion Week. The collection will later be available in every John Richmond store worldwide. So, um, what, what, what's, what's, what's the plan? I wonder, I hope it's not something fashion based, but I feel like it's going to be something fashion based. Uh, I wonder what the loads of big news were. I would have assumed that it would have been like partnerships, but this is like a fashion week kind of thing. So, uh, as far as I can get in my head, tell me when I get back, if I was right or wrong, I'm going to assume there's going to be a dress that's going to be lit up. And he's going to be like, I'm burning nine kajillion Shiba Inu. It's not a real number, but it sounded real. That's as far as I could get in my head. I can't imagine what loads of big news. that Like, think of, will he be making buttons that have the Shiba Inu face on it? His, his profile thing is also of a, a Shiba Inu with a halo. W- wearing a coat? I can't tell what that is. Anyway, that's the, yeah, woo. Something big is apparently going to be happening at Milan Fashion Week with loads of big news. I can't imagine what else is going to be. All right. Let's move on. Yeah. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day. Great morning. Great afternoon. Great evening. Wherever you are. Wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. 
Thank you all once again for watching, listening, commenting, and or supporting. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was going to say, tell me what you think is going to be the big news for Shiba Inu, but what? I, I just assume it's going to be a dress as, as far as my brain can get. Thank you all once again for watching and listening, <laughs> and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.